For those who like shooting black powder firearms, side lock pistols, percussion revolvers, and side lock long guns, protecting the nipples or cones from damage is essential. Hello there. This is the Range Range Range. And in this session, I'm going to tell you how to protect the nipples on percussion firearms. This is a two part series. This first part is how you can protect the nipples on side lock, percussion, single shot pistols, and long gun muzzle loaders. Part two involves nipple protection for cap and ball, or CNB revolvers. With side lock, percussion pistols, and long guns, the nipples are more exposed than with a percussion revolver, and percussion revolver nipples are less susceptible to damage due to the surrounding steel, but is still vulnerable to damage from repeated hammer strikes, dry firing, or otherwise. The issue with cappers is that with dry firing, and like 22 caliber firearms, should not be done unless the manufacturer states otherwise. However, and in the case of capper firearms, there just might be a solution to the dry firing dilemma. Percussion nipples tend to get hammered out of shape after many shots fired. A recently read article about how early percussion long gun, muscular rifle, operators used to use a mini ball or a mini ball to protect the nipples on their firearms, shed some light on the ways of our ancestors. This excavated 58 caliber three ring bullet was field made into a musket nipple protector. It was acquired directly from the digger who recovered it from a campsite in the area of Cedar Creek, Virginia. Nipple protectors were used by soldiers to keep dirt from the gun's nipple and to protect it from damage. The nipple was that part of the gun that received the firing cap upon which the hammer of the gun struck in order to create a spark. The small opening in the nipple allowed the spark of the percussion cap to travel through to ignite the gunpowder. An untouched example of a 58 caliber three ring bullet is pictured with this altered example to demonstrate the before and after appearance. What is interesting is the distortion of the bullet from repeated firing of the musket in order to mold the soft lead on and around the nipple. The small prong visible in the base of the bullet is the result of the lead forced into the hole of the nipple. While that seemed like a sound idea at the time, more modern approaches are available to today's capper operator, or at least, my solutions. I use Traditions Performance Firearms Muzzle Loader Stainless number 11 nipples with M6x1 threads for my Tradition firearms, and slick shot nipples number 10 for cap and ball CNB revolvers. I must say that the single shot firearms get used more than the CNB revolvers. It is very upsetting to not be able to dry fire them every so often to check the action. Unlike a modern revolver or pistol, that I can insert a snap cap to use for dry firing center fire firearms or rim fire firearms. So, let me get started with how you can protect the nipple on single shot percussion muzzle loaders to include pistol and long guns. Flexible vacuum caps can be easily cut to the length desired. They can be cut to cover just the cone upper or the entire base of the cone. One end of the vacuum cap is rounded, which works well with the rounded internal of the hammer and cushioning the blow when the hammer strikes the vacuum cap. I like a bit of air space between the cone and the inside of the vacuum cap for added protection. The height of the cone, when seated, will vary but I found that 0.4360 inch to be about average. Cutting the length of the vacuum cap to about 0.5 inch or a half an inch should provide enough protection if the vacuum cap is to be fully seated around the cone and approximately 0.3125 inch or 5 16 of an inch 
should only the upper part of the cone be covered. I prefer the former to the latter. In the past, and to prevent the hammer from pressing against the percussion cap in the field while hunting, it was not uncommon for the shooter, while waiting for or when stalking game, to place a bit of leather between the hammer and the percussion cap. When it came time to fire, simply cocking the hammer would result in the leather to fall free from the firearm, which would then allow the firearm to be fired. In fact, this practice is still carried out today by modern black powder hunters. I would imagine that carrying a pistol with a safety might also have been practiced to prevent unintentional discharges. However, it does take some force to ignite a percussion cap, and simply resting the hammer on a percussion cap may have been the way of the day. The trick is to have a buffer between the hammer and the cone, and modern vacuum caps are but one way, and vacuum caps can be found in various sizes and thicknesses. This is my Traditions Kentucky muzzle-loading 50 caliber percussion pistol, fitted with the Traditions number 11 stainless steel nipple. I purchased a package of 3 16 inch ID high temp silicone rubber end caps, and these fit the bill, or should I say, cone. I cut a rubber cap to half an inch and I sprayed just a bit of ballastol on the outside of the cone to make installing the rubber cap a tad easier to do. The rubber cap slides right over the cone with little effort. When the hammer drops, it is cushioned by the rubber cap rather than slamming against the cone. The hammer is well below the half cock position and that is fine. The rubber cap is only good for a few strikes of the hammer, but one is enough to check the action. My Lyman Plains muzzle loading pistol has a different size cone. Cutting a rubber cap to about 0.405 inch long did the trick. Even though the inner diameter of the rubber cap would not fit over the base of the cone, it still did the trick of protecting the cone from the hammer strike. The use of flexible vacuum caps or soft rubber tubing has reduced my anxiety about dry firing side lock percussion pistols and rifles. Stay tuned for the second segment, how to make your own percussion cap shells and shock absorber. The Sharpshooter 22LR Reloader sells a number 11 percussion cap maker kit from which you can make your own percussion cap shells using a tin can and the provided die. To make the percussion cap hot, you simply add Primal Repriming Compound that is available from the same source. However, for dry firing capabilities, the shell and one other major item is necessary. Shock absorbing material. 
You can make a lot of percussion caps from a single tin can. An ordinary soda or beer can will work. Or you can do what I did and use copper sheeting that I purchased from the Jungle Store. I'll provide instruction for preparing both an aluminum can and copper sheeting. Here are the things you will need. The Sharpshooter 22LR Reloader Number 11 Percussion Cap Maker Kit. Scissors or pocket knife. If you have a paper cutter lying around, that would be best. Soda or beer can or copper sheeting with a thickness of 0 0.005 inch, 36 gauge. Gloves. Safety glasses, a solid working surface, a mallet made of wood, plastic, or metal, rubber sheets of 1 16th inch thickness, glue, and a container to hold caps. By the way, be sure that you have emptied the contents of the can and have let air dry to remove all moisture before you begin. Okay. Let's get started. Using scissors or a pocket knife, remove the top and bottom from an undamaged aluminum beverage can. The can must be aluminum. Check with a magnet if you are unsure. Cut the can down the middle and run it over a table edge to flatten it into a sheet. Clean both sides to remove residue and cut it into strips approximately three quarters of an inch wide. Insert the aluminum strip in the feeding slot of the number 11 percussion cap maker body. Insert the punch carefully into the guide hole. Place it on a solid base and tap the punch downward with a plastic hammer or soft mallet. Use light taps to begin with until you get the feel required. Be sure to hold the strip squarely against the back of the slot. Extract the punch and invert it. The finished aluminum cap will fall from the exit passage. Reposition the aluminum strip for each successive cap. Avoid cutting into a previously cut hole. And after repeated use, paint, aluminum, or other residue may collect in the punch teeth and should be brushed out. My alternative is to use copper sheeting that I obtained through the Jungle website. The copper sheeting is soft copper with a thickness of 0 0.005 inch or 36 gauge. This sheeting is a roll of copper 12 inches wide by 30 inches in length. I can make percussion cap shells until the cows come home. I included a link to the product in the description. I cut the copper sheeting into one and one half inch strips. The punch will create a hole approximately 3 8 inch in diameter in the sheeting strip while forming the cap into the proper shape as the punch is forced downward. So, here's what you need to do, which is essentially the same as using the soda can or other similar can. Insert the copper strip into the feeding slot of the number 11 percussion cap maker body. Insert the punch carefully into the guide hole. Place it on a solid base and tap the punch downward with a plastic hammer or a soft mallet. As before, use light taps to begin with until you get the feel required. Be sure to hold the strip squarely against the back of the slot. Once you feel the punch break through the copper, you can simply push the punch downward until it seats. 
extract the punch and invert it. The finished copper percussion cap shell will fall from the exit passage. As with the can technique, reposition the strip for each successive cap. Avoid cutting into a previously cut hole. Now comes to adding a shock absorbing material inside the shell. The shell is, after all, just that. An aluminum shell and just a shell alone is not going to protect the cone. I use rubber sheets of 1 16th inch thickness. These rubber sheets come in a 6 inch by 6 inch 3 pack and is a product of Matinex products. These can be purchased at the jungle site as well and I have included a link in the description. I use a simple rotating punch for sizing the percussion cap pad that I need to make from the rubber sheet and then apply a dab of glue to attach the padding to the inside of the percussion cap shell. Of the two ways mentioned, aluminum can and copper sheeting, the first is the least expensive. However, if you are going to make your own hot number 11 percussion caps, way number two would be the way to go, as the copper forms better. Well, there you go. I have shown you my two methods of making percussion cap nipple protectors. One using an ordinary aluminum can and the other using copper sheeting. Now, you can install the nipple protector on your favorite side lock percussion firearm and dry fire it without concerning yourself with damaging the cones. This completes part one of this two-part series. In the next series, I'll talk about how to protect the cones on the percussion revolver, and I hope that you will return to watch it. In the meantime, stay safe out there.